so awesome. So welcome to you, Fleur, Fleur Inanna. And welcome to everyone who's going to be watching this. Um, I'm Shakti and I'm really excited and honoured um, to be speaking with you, Fleur, about uh, your work and about the theme of stillness, which infuses everything that you do and bring to the world. Um, so Fleur, I have known for a few years, but longer mm -hmm. through mutual friends who I've known have worked with you and mm -hmm. I've really seen how their work and their being has blossomed in the world. Um, it was kind of like this waiting for the moment to come a bit closer to experience your work for myself, which I did last year and, um, you know, working with you, even though it wasn't that much, actually was one of the if I look back to my year last year the work that I did with you was one of the key things the key practices the key experiences that allowed me to drop deeper into my own stillness and that oh my own sort of embodiment of you know what I know you're going to talk about that sort of somatic experience of oneness um, and of course it's never ending <laughs> endless so, um, yeah, that's kind of my introduction in terms of how I've met you and our connection. And, and again, for those who don't know Fleur, Fleur is uh, an incredible woman who is a mystic, uh, a guide, like a soul guide, an essential guide. She works with natural birthing. She's a, an artist. Um, well, you can describe your art a little bit more. But again, everything that you offer from my perspective and what you've said arises from your own experience of stillness and connecting with your essence and that uh, place of non-separation. And of course, you teach this amazing somatic meditation experience, which um, brings a deeper connection with, what do we call that? <laughs> the space, <laughs> the stillness. You got it. <laughs> yeah, true nature. Yeah, it's such a, I'm so happy to be here. It feels such an honor to sit with you. It feels really natural. And um, yeah, uh, so, I, so I'm an essential guide, really. Um, I'm really passionate about inviting people into the depths of their being through their bodies. So journeying with the somatic experience is important because that creates the integration for the depth that you arrive into. Right. And um, so it's, it's a very simple recipe that I'm working with that's been shown to me. So I've um, worked for nearly over 10 years now, maybe even near 15, I kind of lose count. Um, with Lisa Sophia in her approach to awakening and you know embedded in in all that we do together and and then how I come to share that work is this foundation of stillness um, that it but through the body through the somatic right and that's um that's really important because you you know you do put the accent there and I want to inquire why, you know, why the accent on going through the body and the somatic mm -hmm. experience? Yeah, so um, it's the integration, really. So you could um, gain access through deep meditation to a city or a state or through the, the depth. Um, but then you may find that as you get up and walk around, suddenly that state disappears or you know, someone says something to you and you feel triggered and you suddenly feel you've lost something. Right. So ideally we're getting to the point where we're experiencing ourselves as the source that's created the state. Uh, we recognize it's a source remembering. Yeah. And um, the way to bridge that remembering in all aspects of ourselves is to bring the somatic experience with us, to, to not leave um any part behind um so it's it's, it's really for the inter the integration um and and then also to um stay in touch with how you're experiencing your sense of self because you know you may touch deep stillness but your sense of self could be 
having an there could be another phenomena arising within you that needs to be deeply honored and and then when that gets honored deeply it, it unifies with the deeper stillness and informs the stillness you you kind of become entangled with what you are on a deeper level <laughs> in a new way and um uh, I'm so glad, like what you said, what you just said, because um, it, you you are answering questions that uh, some of the women in my Awakening Shakti group are asking me. Yeah. Um, which is so um, things like I sit and I meditate and I'm blissed out. I love it. I'm there. I'm totally connected. And the minute I disconnect, or the minute I come back into life. Mm -hmm. I hate it and it's uncomfortable and I get triggered and I have bad moods and you know so it's like how so the, the question is exactly this how do I integrate mm -hmm. and then the, it's kind of the other way around also um I'm meditating more now uh, because I've been inviting everyone to have a daily stillness practice and it's including the body because that's also mm -hmm. my emphasis but it's it's also then um things are coming up which feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. so what do I do with this now I've been sitting in meditation and I'm suddenly aware there's this physical discomfort there's this emotional discomfort that previously mm -hmm. I wasn't so aware of now I'm aware of it what do I do <laughs> yeah. and, and so it really all boils down to your ability to accept and allow happening. I think no matter where we're sitting in our experience whether it's samadhi or whether it's if there's um our ability to accept and be with is what cultivates the ultimate surrender right so um and then it's not like that's the thing that's stopping you that's the thing that it, it's important to um include every sensation you know in a way if you consider that it's all shakti, like even the 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 irritation, the anger, the, the the stuckness, you know, every phenomena that's possible is born of shakti. So when you consider that, why would you leave something out? Right, exactly that. Yeah. Like nature's left nothing out and, and so I think and then when we realize that the nature of the thing, the medicine of that experience can re be realized. So what, what is um, anger when there's no suffering? What is sadness, you know, and what you end up discovering is essence um, when you allow yourself to be deeply touched by a phenomena, it shows you or be the phenomena, it points you to your deeper nature. Um, or the, the the refinement of the essence there. Right. Um, I get I get that. I really do. And again, this is the power that I've experienced in the practice with you and with your guidance. Mm -hmm. And I just again, I want to come back because I know somebody watching this is going to be hearing this and feeling potentially, mm -hmm. huh, that's what I want. And also, but I don't quite know what that means. I don't quite mm -hmm. know. Um, how do I accept and allow when I'm feeling really shit about myself or, um, you know, how, how do I accept or allow? What, yeah, I mean, what's it like to feel really shit about yourself? Like, ask yourself, what it, what's that like? Like, as in, I, it's the, the allowance, is the allowing yourself to be where you are and invite yourself to have that experience. You know, someone said to me the other day, I feel lost. I'm like, what's it like to be lost in your body? Can you let yourself be lost? It's okay to be lost. Actually, there's an, a great intelligence to being lost. Um, so, yeah, it really just boils down. And we have to cultivate that acceptance, you know, and it has to be inclusive of the lack of acceptance, which is the tricky part, you know. So you also rush rather than kind of separating things out as hindrances there's no nothing like if everything's included if i'm resisting something then that's what i let myself be resistance the more 
the letting it the full, more fully you can allow yourself to be it the the faster it will change in a way but you can't do it with an agenda to change because it's the non-attachment that creates the yeah so um what do you say to someone who's afraid fleur of uh perhaps what is arising feels incredibly intense and yeah. overwhelming and then there could be a fear of just being lost in that pain or that darkness Mm -hmm. what do you say when someone's experiencing that meet the fear like meet, meet, meet the edges of that fear like move to the edges not as something you need to overcome or heal that needs to go away um, what does that fear feel like at a visceral level and, and you can just sit at the edge of it and, and if it's it can often feel like a, a tremor inside or like an earthquake or a, um, if it has an emotional component, you may feel that more in the, the nervous system, you know, so you really want to start just to honor the fear and listen to what it's saying. And right. by meeting it, you're actually letting it speak because in that fear, there may be like, I need to feel safe. And as soon as you acknowledge that feeling, you're already bringing in awareness yeah. because you're, you're, it's an attitude of um, deep listening. And, and then if there's a visceral component, letting that move through as much as you can, but from that place of meeting, not from a, um, uh, there's a particular that I'm pointing to in that meeting of, um, bringing in the part of yourself that knows how to hold yourself that knows how to like it's inviting yourself into that um right yeah. i i get that also and um and what if the part that knows how to hold yourself is not very cultivated yeah so deep breathing Put your hand on your chest as an acknowledgement of you're here for you. Um, phone someone who can sit with you in stillness because, you know, we can hold stillness really well for each other. You know, that's what I'm doing. I'm creating an environment for people to go through those experiences, but ultimately help wanting people to create that environment for themselves so that they don't need someone else. But, but it's completely natural have phases I mean I've been through them many times of going through gateways and I phoned my my teacher and said you know this is happening for me and just that simple communication may have been enough or you know um, so resource use your resources so anything that will help you relax into your experience then do that um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know we've gone sort of right into the nitty gritty. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. um, which is wonderful. I'm really grateful to you. And I know everyone who watches this is going to be really grateful because it's going to support uh, a deeper understanding and experience of what this is about, I think. So thank you for going right into the heart of it. <laughs> I'm going to add one thing to that because it, it feels like someone said this to me once. You can manage your process. Like if you feel like you've been sitting in an edge and it's really overwhelming and you've sat there for a bit and you feel like things are not changing, you know, have a bath, do something else, come back to it. Like as in you don't, it's up to you because you're cultivating trust with yourself. <laughs> right. So I think that's. Yes. Yes, I like that. Cultivating trust with yourself because that's ultimately what is needed. Sorry, I threw you off track again. I just, it was coming out to, to mention that because. Um, yeah, no, no, that's, that's totally, again, I, yeah, aligned uh, with my understanding also. And, uh, but yeah, it's a process. It's a process. Um, Okay, so we've kind of gone into the nitty gritty, which is kind of the other way around to where I thought we'd go, but that's okay. So I'm just kind of, yeah, 
like feeling where to go next mm -hmm. with this. So, um, yeah, let's go back through. So this, we started because you, you were talking how you always begin with the somatic experience and you go through mm -hmm. the somatic experience, which includes the book, includes everything. Yeah. Things left out. So every embodied sensation, experience, thoughts as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe I have another question about the nitty gritty there as well, actually, which is about another thing that people commonly talk about is like the mind is just chattering nonstop. And this belief that or this, I have to stop the mind from chattering. Mm -hmm. Then I'm in stillness. How do I stop the mind from chattering? Because I want to be in stillness because that's spiritually superior. But my mind's chattering all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that really... Um... I almost feel like that's a program embedded in meditation traditions that needs to be needed out because, um, you know, your faster way into that no mind place is to really let yourself be the thought. And, and, and actually, um, there's a re a remembering and an honoring of the, the, the thoughts as a part of what's happening. That's Shakti too. Yeah. So um, I would encourage them to be the thoughts, the sensations that come with the thoughts. And then notice if there's anything that feels calm and still in relationship to them as the thoughts. You know, maybe somewhere else in their body, it may, you know, and just let stillness be in the same space as thinking. Uh, and then that brings an invitation for the thought thinking to um, come to unify or be unified with stillness through just letting them be in the same space together. Right. And, and actually what's really happening is we're relaxing into the thinking. <laughs> yeah. All that's happening really, um, stillness didn't go anywhere. It's just the ability to relax into it. Um, yeah, so kind of like you were saying at the beginning, like oh, no resistance or no yeah. judgment. No, it's just yeah. that is. There, there is then at a deeper level, um, a level of turning in where it can be a phase someone's going through where they can feel thinking as an energetic, it can feel the energy of thinking kind of more around them. And then they may be sitting in a deeper stillness. And, and then you just include the energy of thinking. So you just let that be there so the, as there's a relaxation you may not be the, the thinking may feel less <laughs> coherent so it may feel just like subtle um vibrations and um phenomena right and then yeah the um Again, sort of in your in your process, in your practice, having moved through the somatic experience, there is also then, as you've now sort of spoken about this, finding the stillness somewhere inside the body, outside the body. Mm -hmm. And how do you describe stillness or invite the experiencing of that or moving towards that? Mm. Mm. Well, I would say that one of my main focuses in the way that I share this work is I'm really creating an environment for people to drop into that stillness. So I would say that through the guided way I'm guiding meditation and, and, and being that myself, there's a natural dropping that happens. So there's an element of transmission, but the feedback I get from people is they're like, oh, I have always known that. Or it's like, yeah, like it never feels like it's about me because it's not. <laughs> it's just the environment that we're creating together. Mm. Um, so I'd say that that's a, a big part of my specific offering. I know that, um, uh, for example, I work really closely with Sarah Fauna and she shares this work too and she has a particular way of using um, nature-based meditation, you know, so they're using her env natural environment to um, encourage that deep dropping. So being in the forest, being, being you know, wherever, <laughs> you know, somewhere that facilitates that um, remembrance of stillness. 
Um, I know that you use particular words um, to evoke, and they, I found that very helpful. So hmm. what are some of the words that you use to describe that? Yeah, so the um, calm, calm and still, or calm or peaceful is kind of a nice starting point. Um, it may, still know if people may, may not relate to that word. I think it's important people name how it appears when I ask the question, you know, what calm and still in relationship to your body. Someone may just feel like a warmth or a relaxation somewhere. Right. Um, as we go deeper, I may start to invite people into the deepest level of silence. And, and that deepest silence for me is the, um, there's a level of cessation of activity. So the silence is an intensity to the silence, the complete stillness, utterly. Um, does that mean in your experience um, mm -hmm. there's no longer thought, there's no longer sensation or awareness of emotion or like a sort of, a, how do I describe it, like a pulling back from the sensorial? Yeah, it's three sensory, um, so there can still be sensory phenomena, but I recognize I'm at the, the point in myself where I realize myself to not be the sensory. And so I'm, 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 I've become another word for it would be the unchanging, um, or the absolute, uh, or the what it is that unmoving and unchanging our, our true nature. And um, once you're sitting there, you are free. <laughs> you're, yeah, in the non-manifest um, remembrance. But that doesn't mean that senses and things are not happening, but I, I think it's important to acknowledge people will be sitting in different stages of, of their deepening. So you may have a phase of meditation where you go into total absorption, and that's not an end point, but it may just be a complete cessation of everything. But a lot of the time, there's an element of the deepest, which is the unchanging, and then there's subtle phenomena, uh, gestalt experience, um, state, subtle states or union, um, or, and then there may be things happening in space that feel denser, you know, and, and that just speaks to what is yet to, when, when space passes, which is the womb work level of our work, uh, the level of identity that feels very spatial, preconceptual, when space and time, which is memory, collapse, there's no longer me, sensory, um, there's, there's just the, uh, the deepest absolute embedded dynamically in everything. <laughs> so there's no two things. So there's two things you've said there that I'm kind of drawn to go further with and one is that you're talking of union uh, and mm. the other is your reference to the womb right um and i think we'll go with the womb um because that's again that's sort of relevant for the women that i work with and i'd love to hear your understanding and your your work with that and i guess i also have a personal question around that which is because i'm so steeped in tantric philosophy myself mm -hmm. for me i kind of instinctively make this stillness equals masculine manifest equals feminine you know the shakti mm -hmm. Kiva, but then obviously the union of the two is the integration that is part of my own practice and teaching but yeah is it the same for you or is it different mm -hmm. um because I'm also aware of the sense of the great mother or the divine cosmic womb as being the void. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm curious to hear what it is for you. Yeah, um, it, it will, in different moments, depending on what's happening for me. And, um, but as a foundation for me, there's a transcendence of the... Right now it feels 
primarily a transcendence of being masculine or feminine. They're deeply embedded. It's not like they're not there, but the, the polarities are more infused and dissolved into one another mm. in a deeper way. Um, and, and then in saying that, um, I may be working with something and that'll bring up the call to look at masculine. And so if I'm experiencing a theme I want to refine around and I'll meditate on that, then, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a useful way of, of stalking identity to feel into any separation between masculine and feminine. And then, yeah, it's very archetypal to experience um, what you shared about the awareness um, or stillness, the awareness identifying with um, the masculine and often as the unchanging or as stillness. But I would say that in the last um, couple of months, I've been working a lot with the four qualities of them, or maybe a month, the four qualities of the masculine and feminine so the um the cosmic masculine and cosmic feminine and then the masculine essence and the feminine essence and that added such a new dimension to it's so rich because where you know you're really feeling in the awareness and then the um the, the subtle properties of the cosmic the impersonal masculine and, feminine. <laughs> and then the, the masculine and feminine essence has more of a personal um, tone to it um, and has more of a substance, you know, the, the essence uh, that has more of a, um, a nectar quality to it, a, um, a material expression. Um, so it, it's so I guess what I'm pointing to is that it really um, depends on what's happening for me, how much I'll go into masculine and feminine. But right now in this moment, I, I feel very um, more of this dissolved sense of the two. And, and then I can, if I feel into my body now, I can feel some subtle um, I can feel the uniqueness of the masculine and the uniqueness of the feminine. Um, and then I would have to explore a little more deeply. So is that the personal, which, which aspects of the feminine and masculine is that uniqueness belonging to? And right. And so then does that mean that you're experiencing the union that you speak of that comes from you know, from this being your practice, so the, the, the no separation, the unification of stillness and, mm -hmm. you know, you talk about the phenomena or, you know, the manifest, everything being mm -hmm. shakti and then the stillness and the meeting of those two. So that's the unified yeah. right? Yeah, it feels like eventually the, the, the separation, the concepts of them collapse and they just become more and more entangled in one another in its natural way and you can't separating them out is like a microscopic <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. yeah but but and also it's important when we're talking about separation there's, there's also a certain point where you kind of transcend the polarity of and union and and so you can still experience or be aware of separation but you don't feel that, like it doesn't create a division in you from your true true nature there's a foundation the unification is such a strong natural intent so embedded that it doesn't feel that different from the separation you can kind of dance between it gets very very subtle and and there's just deeper and deeper levels of union so if you look at it like that you could be in a unified experience and you enjoy the blossoming of that for a while and you're in it and you're creating from it and then suddenly something hits you and you go back in you go into separation and it 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 basically is that you're moving to the next transcendence and that thing that you've hit is your gateway to that so does that so, stop Fleur? 
Well, what, eventually it, it feels more like a creative, it's creativity. So, um, but yes, it, it, I feel like it does because you eventually gain mastery over the basic forces um, of the unseen forces and, and that really becomes the ultimate um, things can be happening but the stuff it's like the capacity for identification all the way you're, you're, you're kind of um, working into a point where um, even suffering is okay <laughs> you know there's there's a deep inclusion so you can go into it even and, and your, your need to process things will fall away eventually completely, you know, because that gets addressed through the, um, the deeper realizations of the unchanging and absolute. Um, so no processing of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I still have to do, you know, processes sometimes around things, but you're, You'll, you notice over time that gets less and less and less. And then there's also a specific new ways are shown to you that don't feel like processing. Right. It's just, you're, all that's happened actually is your ability to accept and allow has become so deep that you're in that in every moment. So you don't need to sit and do a process because it's just moving in each moment. So any incoherences are just swallowed and digested in the living moment and then you you know and there's not an attachment to being at a certain place within that you appreciate every encounter with yourself as the devotion right i get that i do get that again the, the gift of working with you last year was um <clears throat> those two words acceptance and allowance it's like mm -hmm. they imprinted and um it really really you know it's not just words it, it affected my experience of everything Ex and the quality of my life really <clears throat> yeah. but to the excuse me <coughs> um to the point where sometimes i i forget um because it somehow makes life easier right because it's like, oh, that happens. Okay, that's happened. Mm -hmm. So redirection or, you know, but I forget mm -hmm. that isn't actually the way it is for many people. So um, I don't know if you have any more guidance around that acceptance and the allowance, like mm -hmm. I can imagine it would be feel really frustrating. But how do I, how do I accept? Yeah, I mean, I think it just comes back to what's happening to you right now. What are you feeling in your body? Um, and, and, you know, you don't have to make a process out of it. Just uh, you can be moving through your day. If, if the meditation is exasperating the, the phenomena in a way that doesn't feel supportive, then make a moving meditation out of it, um, a mindfulness practice of, I feel resistant and I, this is what's happening. And um, it, it will change. Um, the, the allowing is what brings you, it's the like, it br brings in the relaxation eventually. Um, yeah. But be mindful, you know, don't do things that are gonna compound the identification, you know, like for example, often talking, about what's happening you know if you have a stuckness or a um often you know if you talk a lot about it you're kind of compounding the story which needs honoring i'm not saying don't honor the story but right. the mindfulness around you know how are you applying yourself to the relaxation of your experience um yeah thank you that is really again identification is another yeah thing I learned from you uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah like and also from Thesa yeah um, you know one of the taglines that I remember from her is 
her identification is at the root of all suffering. Yeah. You know, and that's stuck. That's really stuck. Mm -hmm. So beautiful wisdom. Um, I guess I would like to just bring in uh, a little bit about, if that's okay, I mean, it's up to you what you answer, how you answer, but Mm -hmm. because you've shared so much of this amazing wisdom and it's it's so evident how you know you embody it mm -hmm. so it's evident um but has it always been this easy like have you always been a mystic have you always been on this path of devotion mm -hmm. i'm just curious what brought you Mm. Are you doing this work now like did you have some experience yourself good or bad mm -hmm. or you know was there something in your context that brought you onto this path yeah definitely <laughs> now it's not always been easy for sure um i would say i definitely had so my in my early 20s my initiation was through crisis uh, through spiritual crisis through um, having tapped into very, very um, deep, deep levels of my consciousness but not having the capacity to integrate. Um, so having had kind of opening and, and going through quite a um, classical shamanic death experiences and being very much alone and in trauma um, to a certain degree around it. So I, as a result, took a very simple life. I, I lived in, um, on a bus on a farm and I was, you know, by that point I had also done a lot of traveling. I had done a degree in um, shamanism and Buddhism and Sufism to really find the language for my experience. Um, so it was really when I was, um, kind of in my mid-twenties, having gone through a lot of really intense initiatory experience in a very raw way, I started to do the Pasna uh, in a very light way at a place called Guy House in Devon, a beautiful retreat center, very dear to my heart, sort of emotional distance about it. Um, and I started just to do meditation there, and <laughs> that made it very clear to me and the teachers there were like what you know it was kind of I had this metaphor for my experience I was kind of like a toddler behind the wheels of a Ferrari <laughs> and I was kind of like I don't know how to drive this car and my teachers would just be I would come and sit in my meditations and I would be like so I journeyed to Sirius today and, you know I'd tell them my journeys my astral and the teachers would just be like well, breathe and and they didn't know how to respond to my experiences and you know they were just like we'll come back to the body and so I was feeling um kind of in the right place but not at the same time not getting the right feedback and then I did a retreat and there was a diamond approach teacher on the retreat and the diamond approach has a big emphasis on essence it's all about the the, the diamond approach okay. it's, um a kind of Buddhist Sufi combination created by um, an amazing man called Almas, who it's, it's the development it's very akin to what we're doing in our work, um, but with slightly different, more of a modality. So she was a diamond approach teacher and um, I started sharing my journeying that I was experiencing, becoming the bee, going into the hive that was my heart, the bee showing me how to try, you know, all these really rich experiences that teachers up to that point had just been like quite masculine teachers, I must say, they were kind of like, whoa, you know, <laughs> but that's not what you need to be doing, you know, and um, I felt wrong, actually, on and and she just looked at me and she was just like I had that experience too and it was so nourishing to my soul and I and I just remember thinking okay cool this is I can land and so I've, I've been really blessed 
with um, teachers coming into my life and, and showing me who I am, or like helping me relax into who I am and how that's unfolding. And I did a retreat that CISA was um, teaching on, and it was with this group called Peak States of Consciousness. And again, I was like the toddler behind the wheels of a Ferrari. <laughs> and, um, and it was quite edgy because we were doing very, very deep sh shamanic regressional work. And um, again, I, I really was in the, la the inability to integrate, you know, my experience. And, and Disa just recognized that and she recognized a lot of the things that I experienced. She experienced too, sensitivity around electromagnetic radiation, around um, other people's experiences, you know, merging with people, feeling what they're feeling, you know, all the kind of terrain of over empathetic, empathetic. Um, and so I, I felt that the peak states work was not for me because I, it was scaring me. Actually, I didn't have the capacity to integrate where they were taking me and um, I needed something more holistic. And, and Disa invited me to work with her and she was developing her own work. She moved away from the peak states and um, she and her partner Rob at the time um, were developing and and I I just knew that Disa I just felt such kinship with her and never looked back really <laughs> and so I've been there in the infancy of the development of her work and then uh, or at least that phase of it you know going on her doing her own thing and and journeyed intimately with her through that and, and took you know the beginning phase of that was very much um clearing my trauma or you know the fear um of the the death experiences i had gone into and being able to integrate that in in my body and and then and then because the way we were working we were working a lot with um conception and birth um developmental <clears throat> stages in the womb combined with the, the union of that at a galactic level, which um, so kind of as a metaphor, like un unifying the core of the earth with the core of the galaxy within you. And I think a lot of that work really brought the integration for me around being the Ferrari. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, so within that, you know, even prior to all of that, you know, in my phases of crisis, um, I was blessed with, um, I had a teacher when I was at university, I'd go to his house every Sunday and we would do Tai Chi on the, on the hills. And he was like this rock in my life. And I was just so spilling over the edges with sensitivity. And, and, um, and I was part of a healing circle, you know, so I had my, before I met Disa was, I had all these beautiful influences in my life um, that were really key to kind of hold the ground. Mm. And yeah, and then, so I've just been working so intimately with Disa for so long now. And it, it, it's not, you know, when people talk about um, teacher-student teacher relationships, you know, it's really, that's not what it is. I feel like it's, transcended all forms of um, separation it just feels so inherent to one another and and I honor deeply that she has pioneered what we're doing and she's the kind of um, a, a friend of ours gave this metaphor for us as a group and she's like the tip of the arrow you know we're like <laughs> um, so no, it, it wasn't, definitely hasn't been all easy and I wouldn't wish upon anyone the phases of initiation I went through and how I went through them. Um, and I think that's partly what drives me to do what I do is because you don't have to actually, like other people don't need to go through those crises. They were because I was not in, I had nothing in my environment give me the feedback that I needed to relax into my experience. 
Right. Um, and I was doing things as a young, as a young person, you know, that was I was living off grid, you know, really trying to find myself, you know. So I, I had um, a way of life that was very beautiful, but also not um, providing the meeting the spiritual depth my being was calling for. Mm. So, Wow, <laughs> a lot of intensity, um, mm -hmm. and then like wow, such depth and cosmicness. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> but also then bringing us right to this moment um, in a beautiful way, because as you've spoken of how you don't, you know, you wouldn't wish that level of initiation upon anyone else. So that's guiding how you work now what you offer and mm -hmm. now, which is beautiful and really really important because um there's so much change crisis and shift happening right now mm -hmm. and so much awakening happening um, yeah you know, quite i mean i've had in the last month two women contact me saying you know i'm having an awakening and i don't know what to do it's just right. like full on mm -hmm. so um yeah, I think um, I, I, it's not that I wouldn't wish the initiation because the initiations are an inevitable part, you know, they don't belong to me, they're everybody. But I don't wish the lack of support from the environment, not because the people in my environment were wrong, they were just, I just wasn't yet, you know, um, with my, my chosen environment that matched those experiences. So my wish for people that are going through openings now um, that you get to ride the power because the intensity of your experience is the indication of the power of it. You know, that the challenge indicates that the opening you're going through is powerful. Um, and I wish for you to have the right resources and tools and channels um, for you to really make that journey. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe that you've already answered that in a way, because I guess I was going to close with that final question, you know, in these times now, where there's, I know it's a bit of a meme, but I do think it's true as well. And, and I certainly feel that where I am anyway, there has been this enforced stillness. Mm. Um, and so, so much is rising and there is this very strong current or energy of mm -hmm. awakening in the field. Um, like what, do you have any uh, guidance or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think when you work, if you really allow yourself to drop into the stillness, you're also gonna tap into the intelligence of what's happening. For you on a unique level uh, so listen to that if you're feeling called to to slow down you know that's one of the qualities um, I've been noticing a deep slowing down because there's an opportunity for a resetting and um, so really trust things if that's saying turn away from what's happening for a bit or if it says engage you know really follow your 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 instinct but let the instinct be informed by that deep stillness don't fuel the, um, so if you're triggered by something, then use that for your inner growth. So let yourself see all the reactions, let yourself feel them, honor them, be moved, cry, rage, but do that in a conscious meditative way, as in you're really being it. And, and then as that integrates, you get to gain the empowerment within that subject that's triggering you. And that's the beauty because then you can become something new in the face of that reality. And this is the new paradigm, you know, to inform what's happening. And you can be doing that from the quiet of your home as an energetic being. It may mean you don't end up writing on Facebook. It may mean that you do, it doesn't matter. Let it be authentic from that place of, um, deep integration in the face of the subject. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 
powerful time. I, I'm... The, you know, what's just like, what's, um, what's the word, what jumped out from everything you've just said is the, the point about the, the opportunity for the creativity. So for the new. Yeah. Yes. Like the yeah. Yes. I mean, that's how that creativity is the is the um, you know creativity is the pure purity of consciousness. You know, it, it expresses through creativity, and um, ultimately, we're all profoundly creative beings, and. And I think as I say that, I want to really honor the people who are sitting in phases of feeling uninspired, uncreative, because that, that deconstruction is, an, is as inseparable as the expression of creativity. You can't separate the two forces. And so just coming back to wherever you are in your experience, can you rest in the intelligence of that and use it, like use now, like use this time to make a leap in your in consciousness it's an exciting time you know and don't waste it you're blessed to be here in this time a very um karmically blessed moment um yeah i feel that too <laughs> really it's like wow <laughs> yeah mm. beautiful thank you Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I think we'll close there because we've covered mm -hmm. a lot, and um, yeah. that's a beautiful conclusion. And so then I will post below when I post the video mm -hmm. uh, how to get in touch with you, uh, with your work. I know you've got a workshop coming up, um, a webinar coming up soon online in mm -hmm. May, um, and then you you have a website. I have a website. Um, I'm also in the early phases of with Lisa and Sarah of creating a new environment for people to deepen in our work. Okay. And I'll bring the kind of womb work um, grounding into the primordial stillness part of that primarily. Um, and then we'll, so there's, that's an exciting new arena for people to, to work in this way and one one um yeah whatever i'm creative with it so i i have group meditations happening um my my art is a really beautiful and fun way to deepen with me it's a really the dual transmission journey and i paint you as I experience you at a level of origin <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> so it's a deep honoring. Yeah. Thank you, Fleur. Yeah, thank you so much, Shakti. Mm. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> so I'm going to say thank you so much to Fleur and thank you everyone for watching. Um, please like, feel free to post your comments, your questions below and um, stay connected. Much love. I'm just going to end the recording.